Song of Solomon, Chapter 5. I am come into my garden. And that leaves verse four, chapter 4, verse 16, where the bride says, come into the garden. My sister, my spouse. So he answers the, the bride. I've gathered with my myrrh. Again, that's one of the presents sent to the, about the two-year-old Jesus. Not the baby Jesus. With my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. Sweetener. Art, uh, 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 natural sweetener, not artificial. I have drunk my wine with my milk. All right, I found something that, that it says that Boaz, you know, he drank his wine. And this right here, you, you need to mark in your Bibles. You need to make a note. My wine with my milk. Because I found something interesting. Because first when I read that, I said, that don't sound good. Well, let me, let me show you something. Wine with my milk is a drink called the purple cow. It's called a great punch. It's like a milkshake, but it's great. It's like chocolate milk, but it's great. Now, if you're going to think that wine everywhere in the Bible is alcoholic beverage, let me tell you something about my wine with my milk. If that wine was alcoholic, and you were to put wine and alcohol, if you put alcoholic wine and milk, it would curdle the milk. The acid in the alcohol would turn that milk into curdles. Well, look at that. The Bible itself has brought to us that not everywhere in the Bible is there wine as alcohol. So drink a little wine for thy stomach and fern. It's not alcohol. Jesus turned the water into wine. It's not alcohol because in a, in a book in the Old Testament that many Christians don't read. Never mind the Old Testament, the, the Song of Solomon. You find the answer of, of Solomon, who's a type of Jesus Christ, saying, Hey, I, milk, I, I mix my wine with milk. And I believe in Proverbs, wisdom has uh, is something to mix drinks. And it can't be alcohol because you would end up with a curdled milk. And who would drink that? Eat, my friends, drink, not alcohol. Yea, drink abundantly, not alcohol. A great milkshake. <laughs> oh, beloved. Now, that beloved is important. We'll look at that in a moment. Sleep. I sleep, but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved. That I knock it. That knock it. Okay, that's the bridegroom. Oh, the bride, excuse me. That's the bride. But, I mean, excuse me, that's the bridegroom. Because knock is saying, open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled. It is the, the groom knocking out to the, to the, to the bride. Now, if you want to see Jesus Christ in the church, let's go to Revelation chapter 3. Let's take scripture with scripture. A book hardly ever read, you know, Old Testament hardly ever read. Show me, G I'm showing you, G. Look at Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Glad to see in church age, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him, will sup with him, and he will with, with me. Isn't that interesting? I've met many a Christian. I don't read the Old Testament. Shh, sorry. There's Jesus Christ, and there's Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Open to me. Revelation 3. My sister, my love, the church. The church. Not the unsaved. The church. For my head is filled with dew, my locks, his hair, with the drops of the night. Now, here's the bride. I have put off my coat. How shall I put it on? Now, listen, the bridegroom knocks on the door. Open it up. The bride answers. 
with Revelation 3. I put off my coat. What shall I put it on? I have washed my feet. How shall I defile them? It's excuses. The bride has settled herself in the house and Jesus knocks on the door. I'm not getting up for you. I'm not putting my coat on you. When Jesus says, go in the world and, and, and preach the gospel to the world, I'm dressed. I'm not doing that. I washed my feet. That means you settled down. You, you, you're not doing anything. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Verse 15. How shall they preach except they be sent as is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. You're not preaching the gospel of peace if you washed your feet. Church, I wash my feet. Can't come out, Jesus. Can't get my feet dirty. My blood put his hand by to hold the door. Revelation 3. And my bowels moved for him, my inside. Not, not, bowel is a noun, not, not a verb. It's your inside, a bowl inside. We're moved. I was touched. I was moved. I rose up to open to my beloved. What are you doing sitting down? What are you doing laying down? You're not dead, First, first Thessalonians 4. Only those that are asleep are those that died in Christ. What are you doing sitting down when we're told to go into the world? Well, I'll bring the church. We'll sit down in the pew and let the preacher do the job. That's not what it says. Nowhere do I see in the New Testament Paul, Peter, James, or John say, bring them in to the church and go out. I rose up. You ought to be already standing. And when Jesus Christ comes, he's going to find this church, this church period sitting down. We're rich. We're wonderful. We're great. Ha ha. No, you're poor, miserable, naked, and blind. And my hands dropped. I rose up to my beloved. My hands dropped with myrrh. And my fingers with sweet smelling myrrh. Upon the handles of the lock. The only other place that lock shows up is Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 3. Jesus in Revelation 3 knocks and come on out. The bride is sitting down. He knocks at the door and she's okay. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had withdrawn himself. You, you, know, you know what it tells us from Revelation 3 and Song of Solomon chapter 5? She took her time. Jesus says, any man will, will, will I knock at the door. Any man will come. I will sup with him. He sup with me. He's not. She's made excuse. And she's got up. And when she comes to the door, he's not there because she's, she took forever. And many church doors today in the lives of seeing church age, Jesus Christ has stood at the door and knocked. And they took their time. And Jesus walked on. Many churches, Jesus walked on. It's dead in there. He withdrawn himself and was gone. And my soul filled, my soul filled when he spank. I sought him, but I could not find him. But I could not find him. But I could not find him. You're saved. You may get to the point in your lazy Christian life that, okay, now I'm going to serve you, Lord. Too late. I'm ready, Lord. I don't need you now. You made enough excuses. 
I called, but he gave me no answer. Listen, why would not the book of Solomon picture the church and Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ in the church? Why would all of a sudden, oh, that doesn't apply to us. There are many churches today that have died or are dying because they don't evangelize. They've got elderly in the congregation. As the elderly die, they don't bring anybody else in. And the, and, the, and the population of the church grows thinner and thinner and thinner. And one day the, the pastor and the pope is going to get there. The, the preacher is going to get, oh, Lord God, we need some people here. Too late. When your last member dies, so will the church. And that's happened countless ages of the church age, the Laodicean church age. Churches have closed their doors because. You ain't got enough people. You didn't go out into all the world and preach the gospel. You, you, you stayed in and you fooled around and you played with sin and you played with the world. You didn't do what Jesus told you to do. Now your church door is closed. Because you didn't go in the world and preach the gospel. You didn't go out and evangelize. And churches have closed their doors. And I know of two or three churches right now where the where two or three churches have gathered together and made one church from two or three. And they're deader than a hammer. And they go out with the worldly means of evangelism. We're, we're going to have movie night. We're going to play movies about the tribulation period. We're going to have bowling night. We're going to have fellowship. We're going to have fun. We're going to bring the people by the worldly means. Can we join your church? Because our church is dying. Your church is dying. And the pastor gets up before the church, gets up to the, to the podium, and, and he opens up his Bible. He says, oh, where is everybody? They're dead in the ground. You got a dead church. Because you didn't go in the world and preach the gospel. You can't have seeds to bring forth life in the church if you don't put, if you don't have fruit. And you don't have fruit if you didn't put no seeds out. And don't put out the worldly seeds and don't put out the garbage seeds because they won't do nothing. But weeds. In Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 2, he's knocking. Revelation 3, he's knocking. She makes excuse. She's not doing anything. She has to get up, and she takes forever to get up, and she opens up the door, and Jesus is gone. That's happened in many Laodicean churches. That will happen in many more Laodicean churches before Jesus comes. You don't want to go out and preach the gospel? You ain't going to grow. So you know what the church today does, the Laodicean church? Come on in, world. We'll take you as you are. Come on in, world. And then they got a big worldly congregation. Nobody's saved. Nobody's doing anything for the Lord because we invited the world in. And glory, hallelujah, Satan's in the church. Amen, preacher. And Jesus Christ is at the door. Ah, oh, no, Jesus, we don't need you. We're having a good old time with the world. We're a mega church now. All right, goodbye. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had withdrawn himself. That's the lad to see in church age. And was gone. My soul filled when he sank. I saw him, but I could not find him. You know, a lot of churches today. There's a lot of preachers right now. That they're in their prayer closet. They're praying, oh, God. Our church is dying. Yeah, because you didn't want to witness. You didn't do what I told you you wanted to do. We're in the time of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, don't even pray for them. I'm not listening. America, the world, and the church needs to study the book of Jeremiah. And yes, Jeremiah chapter 10 is the Christmas tree. I've been in churches. That's not the Christmas tree. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. And how's your church growing? How is the Lord blessing you? But I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. There have been great churches in the Philadelphia church age. They've been planted. They've been set forth. And where are they in the lives of seeing church age? They're dead and gone. Churches are closing 
in the Laodicean church age period. The watchmen that went about the city found me. R remember over here, she, she was looking for the she was looking for Jesus. She was looking for Jesus. Where is she? Where is that verse? She was looking for Jesus in the broad ways. We studied that the other night. Now the world's come up, the watchmen went about the city and found me and smoked me. And they wounded me, and the keepers of the wall took my veil from me, made it a shame. The world has come into the church and made the church a shame, taking away the, the, the prosperity, taking away the clothes of the church. Afflicting the church after Jesus walks away. The, the world has come into the church. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that ye tell him that I am sick of his love. I thought she'd been telling the daughters of Jerusalem, don't wake my love. Let him rest. Let him sleep. Let him come when he wants to come. Now, O world, O world, tell Jesus I'm looking for him. That's the wrong people to go to. The church today, the lad to see. Oh, world, come in. Oh, world, come in and tell us about Jesus. Tell us about the baby Jesus and the lies about the wise men. And tell us about the lies of Easter and the lies of Christmas. Tell us of all the world. We need Jesus. And we can't find Jesus, so give us the worldly Jesus. Jesus like, out of here. Out of here. And Satan is in the church house. He's amen in the preacher. He's associating with the people in that church. And Jesus is out the door. Sorry, we're rich. We're wonderful. We're great. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're doing well. We don't need you. And one Christian in that church is trying to do it. Oh, Jesus, Lord God. It, it, it is bad in there. Help me. The church is turning to the world to show them Jesus. That is sickening. That is defilement. And yet, do you not see on church signs out front of the church? All are welcome. Never. Would you ever? Th Listen, I was saved in 1987. I would never thought you would see that sign in church. All are welcome. I remember a time that Dr. Ruckman would tell, told his class, uh, what was it? Uh, there's a church sign. I, I forget what it was, but it was it, they, it, something like Jesus loves you, something like that. And they knocked off a few letters. And when they got done knocking off the words, God and Jesus was taken off the signpost. I, I, for, I forget what, what the illustration was. And that's what the church house has done. Verse 9, Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 9. What is my beloved more than any beloved? Your beloved should be the beloved, not any other beloved. Another beloved is man, religion, science, icons, race car drivers, sports, actors, actresses. It ought to be no comparison. To the beloved. And yet Christians, they have other beloveds. We got the greatest preacher. And that was in the Corinthian church. We got Paul. We got Silas. We got. Ain't your favorite preacher. Ain't your favorite evangelist. Ain't your favorite race car driver. Ain't your favorite movie. It's supposed to be about Jesus. Oh, thou fairest among women. What is thy beloved more than any other beloved? And ask that question to Christians today. <coughs> I'd be shocked what you would find for the answer. I, I, don't, I don't read the Old Testament. Well, other men told me that. What, what's the Bible say? Oh, it's the traditions. It's what man said. Oh, we always done it like that. What does Jesus say? 
Even the word of God. Do you know how many Bible translations written by man and not written by God? Other than the King James and the Geneva Bible and the, and the family of the King James Bible. You know, other people out there, they have written their own ways. I guarantee they're working on a Bible right now. Get rid of all servitude. Make the black and, and make them look wonderful and great. You know, Black Lives Matter Bible. I guarantee they're working on it somewhere. Love more than any other beloved that thou does so charge us. I live in Florida. I remember a while back with this COVID-19 and in Florida, and there's places in, in America and in the world that churches are closed. COVID-19, right or wrong. But your faith is in God and you fear God and your church is closed. Well, that's all I'm going to say. But in Florida, churches are allowed to be open. They want to be open. And some are having outdoor services. And that's, I rather have an outdoor service than being in, indoors. I prefer to be outside. Okay? But... I remember a while back, while churches were closed, one of them, uh, Mickey Mount ran, or one of those perverted amusement parks opened up. And I remember seeing the helicopter of the news. All six lanes were just packed with cars. They opened up after COVID-19. And churches are starting to open up in Florida, I see. And, you know, you're lucky you see a few cars in the parking lot. And I wonder, as I watch six lanes of cars stand still, not even moving, I looked at that video and I said, I wonder how many are Christians. And I wonder how many will be in church Sunday morning. All right, verse 10, Song of Solomon, chapter 5. Now we're going to get in some detail many Christians don't know about. My beloved, Jesus Christ, my beloved, is white and ruddy, reddish. Jesus Christ, according to the Bible, is brown. He ain't white, he ain't Italian, he ain't American, and he ain't black. If I take you back to a church in New London, Connecticut, I forget the name of the road, you will see stained glass windows of Jesus and the apostles black. I can show you pictures in holy Bibles of an Italian Jesus. And you can go to Hollywood and see a movie about Jesus, and Jesus is European. Uh uh. John chapter 1 says Jesus came to his brethren, and his brethren is Jewish. Jesus is brown skinned. Jewish. The chiefest among 10,000. I say he's the chiefest of a, a, a billion. His head is as most fine gold. Ooh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar's head, the image was gold. Didn't they call Nebuchadnezzar king of kings? Small K, K. Yeah, I got the king of kings. And he's the finest gold. His locks, his hair are bushy. Whoa. Bushy. Need a little hair there to be bushy. Some people, oh, no, Jesus didn't have long hair. Uh, he didn't have long hair to be cursed the law the, uh, of the law, but bushy. My hair, look at my hair. My hair is bushy. I need a haircut. And black as a raven. My Jesus has black hair. You know the bride had black hair? We read that the other night. The goats were black hair. What's those pictures picture Jesus has? Are they black hair? Brown skin. His eyes are the eyes of dove. We read that in, in chapter one. And, you know, doves have a single sight. They can only focus on one. But also dove's eyes are gray. And we read earlier the bride's eyes were, were dove's eye gray. The bride matches the groom and the groom matches the bride. We're going to look like Jesus when we get our new bodies. 
We ain't going to look like what we look like today. We're going to look like Jesus. Box, approximately 33 and a half years old. And I have been told I am full of it when I teach and teach, you know, we're going to look like Jesus. That's what the Bible says. And according to Song of Solomon, the bride looks like the groom and the groom looks like the bride. That's scripture, brother. Yeah, that Song of Solomon you don't read. That's why you don't know nothing. By the rivers of waters. Jesus is the water of life, and, and that dove has plenty of water. Matter of fact, that dove, as the Holy Spirit came down as a dove, not a dove, was by waters when Jesus was baptized. The River Jordan. Ooh, cross-reference. Write that down. There it is. Washed with milk and fitly set. Beautiful eyes. Clean eyes. Pure eyes. His cheeks are as a bed of spices, as sweet flowers. His lips, like lilies, droop, dropping sweet-smelling myrrh. Just beauty. Just fragrance are beyond all fragrance. His hands are as gold rings set with burrow. His belly as bright ivory overlaid with sapphire. Oh, bright ivory is a white with a beige color. So it's not European. And sapphires is blue. Heavenly holiness. His legs are of pillars of marble. Firm set legs. They're not weak. Upon the sockets of fine gold, the best thing. Sockets would be where, where the legs are connected to the hips, to the knees. Gold. His countenance, his face is as Lebanon. And we saw that early with the bride. Excellent as cedars. And cedars are beautiful and they smell beautiful. His mouth is most sweet. Sweetest words I've ever heard. Yea, he is altogether lovely. And yet Isaiah 53 says, as far as the world, there's no beauty that we should desire. Oh, there's great beauty coming. The blessed hope, the glorious spirit of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. This is my beloved. This is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Now, this is my friend, John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Oh, it's not Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay, John chapter 15. Let's take scripture with scripture. John chapter 15, verse 13. John 15, verse 13. Greater love has no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Whence I call you not servants. For the servants knoweth not what the Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all these things have I heard of my father. I have made known unto you. Sounds like Jesus Christ to me. Now let's go to, now beloved, kept saying beloved, right? You know who the beloved disciple is, John, right? Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God giveth unto him to show unto his servants, we're friends and servants, which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto the servant John, the beloved John. Okay, chapter 1, verse 12. Revelation 1, 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake to me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And the midst of seven golden candlesticks was like unto the Son of Man. That's Jesus Christ. Clothed with a garment down to his foot. And gird about his paps with a golden girdle. That's the breast. His head and his hairs were white as wool. He's got white hair. He had black hair. 
<laughs> the church has turned his hair to white. Or such a lovely great church. His hair is white. White as snow. His eyes were as a flame of fire. He's angry. His feet like unto fine brass. Brownish. Brownish. As they burn unto a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. That don't look like the pictures of the pictures I've seen of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 19. Revelation 19, the second advent. Verse 11. And I saw heaven open, behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon it was called faithful and true and righteous as he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire. He's still angry. And on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. And the armies which follow him in the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen. And clean. Out of his mouth, a sharp sword. And this is the second advent, the anger of God, the anger of Jesus Christ. This don't match Song of Solomon. Because the Song of Solomon is dealing with the bride. This Jesus on the white horse is dealing with the enemies. And with it, you smite the nations, and it shall rule with a rod of iron. Man, there's many pictures of the Jesus Christ. We got to get biblically correct. We got to be sound to the Bible. Not what we think, not with tradition. His mouth is most sweet, not the second advent, it's not. That's not a contradiction. To the church after the, the judgment seat of Christ. When all our sins have been judged and turned to ashes. And we are made pure and we are made to look like our Savior, Jesus Christ. Then, okay, my bride, I love you. Now you're without spot. Get on your horse. Now we, got, we got vengeance. We got to go save Israel. As, as Joshua and the children of Israel crossed the Jordan River, came in, and they, and they helped, and they took care of Rahab. That's going to be us. I guarantee when Joshua went into the promised land, his voice was, get in there and kill, kill, kill. And then when Israel got in there and they got the land, Josh, good job, wonderful, all right. All right, you get this land, you get this land, glory to God. This is my beloved. This is my friend. <coughs> John chapter 15. Oh, daughters of Jerusalem. You know what we're to tell Israel? You know what we're to tell Israel? Jesus is the Messiah. You know what we're to tell everybody? Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Jesus saves. Glory to God. 